What's going on YouTube? JT is your point here and welcome back to another edition of my DC comic book reviews. And in today's video, I'm actually going to be doing two videos back to back, which you'll see uploaded simultaneously or a few minutes apart at least. I'm going to be covering the new series DC vs. Vampires. This one's written by James Tiny IV, Matthew Rosenberg with art and colors by Otto Schmidt. So I just read the first two issues in this and I really like the second issue. First issue is a pretty good one in general. I figured, you know what, since I'm reading it, I might as well do some videos on it. It is an Elseworlds storyline, which I think James Tynion seems to do a lot better when he's given Elseworlds stuff to do. Uh, another great Elseworlds storyline that he worked on was Batman slash Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That to me is one of the best Elseworlds storylines I've ever read. In fact, there was two sequels to them. The sequels weren't as good as the original, but Batman slash TM MNT was such a great crossover that Tiny and working within the realms of Elseworlds should make things a little bit more exciting, kind of like what was going on in Deceased. This doesn't feel like it's being as heavily marketed or as big as Deceased, but I am a little bit more intrigued with this one because unlike Deceased where it was zombies, this is vampires, and I'm more of a vampire fan than I am a zombie fan. But Deceased was really, really good. All, I liked all three DC series. Hope at World's End was probably the best because we kind of got a little trinity with the Super Sons, and you added Cassie Sandsmark as the third member of that little trinity. Why there isn't a third trinity member for that group outside of, you know, for Damien and John's generation is beyond me. But it still was a really fun, exciting storyline. So now we got this with Tiny and Matthew Rosenberg, who's obviously working on Task Force C, and Otto Schmidt, who did a really exceptional job on Green Arrow Rebirth. So they're all working together on this little storyline here. So we're going to quickly summarize what happens. Warning, there are spoilers, so you've been warned. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about it. So the issue opens up with a character known as Andrew Bennett. Uh, this is a vampire, and you see Green Arrow kind of lurking in the shadows because he knows something's up. Basically, Andrew Bennett goes to warn the Justice League, including Hal Jordan and um, one half of the Wonder Twins, about the upcoming war between vampires and humankind, or vampires and pretty much everyone else. So basically, his ex-lover, uh, Mary, Queen of the Vampires, who was also the leader of the Cults of the Blood Red Moon, she basically kept humankind and vampire affairs separate for all these years, but now she's been murdered, so Andrew has come to warn the Justice League about the upcoming threat because he doesn't want an all-out war between humans and vampires. He warns of the situation, tries to track things down, went to the Legion of Doom. Pretty much all of them have been turned except for Lex Luthor, who gives them some information to write something down to tell them, hey, bring this to so-and-so uh, and let the world know that I, Lex Luthor, was the one who saved it, so... Lex Luthor dies, and the Legion of Doom has been tracking down Andrew, and basically Hal kind of sighs right here about this whole thing. He's like, so you didn't tell anybody else? And the guy's like, nope. So we get the surprise reveal that Hal Jordan himself is a vampire. Now you might be wondering, wait a minute, wasn't he just out in the daylight here? Wasn't this Andrew Bennett character able to, you know, burn when he's in the daylight? Well, Hal Jordan's ring manipulates different types of light, so he's able to protect himself and control the light so he can basically disintegrate things in existence. He kills one of the Wonder Twins, and it's pretty, <laughs> pretty violent ending, but he basically turns him into a blender and just mushes him into pieces. It's a really <laughs> violent storyline, um, but it's a really cool reveal that it happens to be Hal Jordan because that seems like the last person you'd expect to turn because he has the most willpower. Otherwise, why wouldn't he be, uh, why would he be in control with the ring if he doesn't lack the willpower to, you'd think he would have changed, but it's part of the twist thing, so we'll just kind of roll with it, and at the end of the issue, Batman gets a letter, and it warns about the upcoming vampire threat, so to be continued, so Lex Luthor basically knew who Batman was, so he wrote down the information, gave it to Andrew Bennett, who went to see, tried to see Batman, and at first, Batman obviously wasn't there, and Alfred was there, and he was handed the letter. So yeah, that's pretty much the issue one in a nutshell. It's a good setup. It's a good beginning to the uh, start of the storyline. I really like Otto Schmidt's art style. This isn't the best he's done, but he's doing art and he's doing colors on top of everything else. But it is like, it kind of fits the tone of it. I've kind of noticed this with a lot of horror stories and the art is a lot more, it's not quite as clean as you see in other types of stories. It's a little bit more uh, raw and kind of dirty, which kind of fits the tone of it. But I still like Otto Schmidt's art style, especially on Green Arrow Rebirth. And it made for a pretty fun, exciting first issue to this thing. The reveal that it was Hal Jordan, Lex Luthor knew who Batman was, and uh, an interesting setup for issue two, which I do prefer to issue one. So if you read DC vs. Vampires, I, I do recommend, uh, tell me your thoughts on it in the comment section down below. If you haven't, I recommend giving it a read. I think it's a pretty solid series, especially for what comes in issue two. And I may have been sour on Tinian's Batman book, but this is 
him working with another writer and Otto Schmidt, and it's a much more exciting storyline. So there's that. Uh, yeah, I quite enjoyed it, and I look forward to talking about issue two. So if you read it, tell me your thoughts in the comment section below. But anyways, be sure to like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to the YouTube channel for more content. We're about to hit 2,000 subs. We're only like 20-something away. Hopefully I can hit it by the end of this year. That is the goal, to hit the 2,000 subscriber mark by the end of next month. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. Uh, be sure to come back for the next video, which should be uh, posted pretty much right after this thing. So yeah, anyways, that's all I got to say. As always, take care now. Bye-bye then, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace.